section under the Articles of Confederation, which was our first constitution. Now, the Articles of Confederation said of itself that it was to be a perpetual union and that it was only to be amended on the unanimous agreement of the states. And then we had the Philadelphia Convention, because it depends upon your view of what motivated that convention. It could be economic interests and self-interest and, and power grabs, or it could be a legitimate problem with the articles. But whichever it is, the fact is that out of Philadelphia, we reported a document that would go into effect when nine states only agreed to it. This is in direct contravention to the Constitution under which we were operating that said a, no changes without unanimous agreement of the states, and B, that said of itself that it was to be a perpetual union. So when we ratified the Constitution, or rather when nine states ratified the Constitution, what were they doing? They were seceding from the United States of America. And when the 10th state ratified the Constitution, it was not only seceding, but it was essentially being annexed by the other nine almost instantaneously with its secession. Now, no more than 11 states ever appeared in Philadelphia at the same time. And we may forget, but if we look back to our history, we'll see that all 13 states did not ratify the Constitution immediately. Rhode Island never sent representatives and refused to ratify. North Carolina initially refused to ratify. So at one point, we had a union of 11 states, and the other two could properly say to the 11, You've seceded from the union. And then I can go on and presumably we will in our conversation, but we tend to associate secession with the South and with slavery. And nothing could be further from the truth. It was the Northern leaders that were pushing secession immediately. At first, when the Louisiana Purchase presented us the opportunity of having new states made from that, Northern leaders threatened to secede. And then in the unpopular war up North, the War of 1812 with England, the New England states met in Hartford, Connecticut, with the Hartford Convention, with a threat of secession. And then later when Texas joined the Union, again there was a northern threat of secession. But the point is, not whether the secession was right or wrong, but the fact was, it was unquestionably part of the constitutional conversation. And it has been traditionally part of fundamental American constitutional values. So if we look to punish Russia, because somehow they deserve it, because they've engaged this in this anti-American, anti-constitutional move by seceding or by, by impelling Crimea to secede, we're wrong. Now, you know, we can get into it. There are problems with the referendum that Russia held or that, in, in theory, Crimea held and, and, and problems in, in, in terms of it conflicting with basic American values, but not secession itself. Very well said, Professor, and expanding on this, I'm just a layman, but I have read the Federalist Papers, the Anti-Federalist Papers. I've studied world history in a wide you know, swath, and this is a self-determination that we see over and over again, and if carried out by the majority of the people, uh, has always been seen as legitimate, uh, as you know, really a veto over larger political units. But, but just from a layman's term a few years ago, I called for a new Declaration of Independence, not to get rid of the old republic, uh, you know, as the Declaration of Independence says, we can make new forms to secure our liberties. It's our right and our duty. If we have special interest in others in the District of Criminals that have taken over and are, and are, and are uh, in their own revolution seceding from America and bringing in a tyranny over us, then what about the states convening to then announce that we're... Uh, you know, abolishing the bureaucracy or abolishing, you know, sections of the federal government or abolishing the whole thing, whatever gets voted on, to then re-upload the old republic in a kind of secession as a way to point out that we've had our federal government hijacked. I had a bunch of constitutional lawyers on, like Edwin Vieira and others, and they, they agreed with me and Ron Paul agreed, but they quantified it more in legalese. It just seems like you know, people say secede. Well, couldn't we secede to restore the republic? Because clearly this isn't the republic we've got operating right now. Well, we don't need to secede. The, the, there are two processes for amending the United States Constitution. One is the one that we've always engaged in, which is to have two-thirds of each branch of Congress approve the amendment, then submit it to the states and have it approved by majorities and three-fourths of the state legislatures. But the Constitution provides for another way of amending itself, which can circumvent Congress itself. 
and that is if two-thirds of the states call for a new constitutional convention, then it can propose amendments, which again would be ratified by majorities in three-fourths of the states. Sure. So that you can circumvent the national government and still amend the United States Constitution. We've not done it before. But we can do it, so we don't need secession in that respect. No, I understand. I just I get so scared of a con con, but I guess a, a overall secession movement and a new federation would be just as dangerous. But, but uh, and I've always been against a con con. But I guess we get to the point of we're in so much trouble. Uh, well, I mean, do you think our republic uh, is, is off the rails, or what's your view on that? Well, you and I may not have the identical politics here, although we probably have the identical view of history. I mean, I'm I'm appalled at federal overreach, as I know you are. There are areas uh, with which I fundamentally disagree with Ron Paul in terms of the legitimate role of defense and the importance of it and the requirement for us to remain a free people, uh, and to be a strong people in order to be a free people, and that strength must reach outside of our borders. So we may not have identical views on that. No, no I understand but that, but when we come back then, Professor, explain you know, to me your view on then as a constitutional lawyer, and a guy that's worked in the federal government as well, where we're at historically compared to Rome, say, I mean, it's similar, but not uh, you know close when it comes to the modern technology. We'll be right back with our guest. His website's robertblecker.com. Stay with us. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. We the people grow cotton, we fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. There's no reason to be sick this season with Supernatural Silver's incredible technology. You can give your immune system the support it needs to help fight off colds, flus, and other nasty pathogens that can ruin the holidays for you and those you love. Used internally or topically, Supernatural Silver is a great defense against sore throats, runny noses, sinus or ear infections, and a whole host of other illnesses. Supernatural Silver is extremely safe and a great way to protect yourself and the ones you love. No one knows what the future may bring, so be smart and plan ahead. Have Supernatural Silver in your emergency preparedness arsenal and give someone a gift that's meaningful, a gift that can change lives. Give the gift of good health this year. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER2013 for 20% off your entire order. That's SupernaturalSilver.com and like us on Facebook. Hi there. My name is Frank Bates. What I'm about to tell you in the next 60 seconds could get me in a lot of trouble. I just created a free video presentation at 123coverup.com that exposes the electricity monopolies and government agencies for what they really are. Incompetent, lying crooks that are counting on your ignorance and fear to keep your power bills criminally high. Some have called this a conspiracy. Others have called it a cover-up, and you will be shocked to find out how deep the conspiracy goes. My video at 123coverup.com exposes the truth and shows you the secret of how I beat them and how you can beat them too. Watch the controversial video that thousands of other smart patriots have already seen in the last three months. Go to 123coverup.com and discover one weird trick to slash your power bill and protect your home. Go watch my video now at 123coverup.com before they force me to shut it down. Again, that's 123coverup.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. 
Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Well, I want to have Professor Robert Blecker back on for the full hour to have a death penalty debate sometime. I support the death penalty if you know you got 100 witnesses in the village that somebody killed a kid for no reason. You know, the village would just all agree we're going to kill this guy and go hang him. The problem is, is the system has been so corrupt that then can you trust a corrupt system to carry out the death penalty? And I know I beg the question... Because then we're talking about secession, but briefly, where do you stand uh, on that quandary with the death penalty? Well, I've spent thousands of hours inside maximum security prisons and on death rows in seven states interviewing the killers and the officers who house them and interact with them and have fairly extensively studied the system. There's no doubt that it's flawed and there's no doubt that it can and should be improved. I mean, the book that that's my, my crime and punishment memoir that's just been published the death of punishment goes into various improvements we can make and and various problems with the system but overall for the worst of the worst of the worst for those for example who rape and torture children for the serial killers for the hired killers when we can identify them when we when we are persuaded um, beyond beyond a reasonable doubt with no residual doubt that they did it and to a moral certainty that they deserve it, then it seems to me we have the moral obligation to execute them. We'll have a discussion about that because I agree with you at a fundamental level. It's just that, again, I don't support North Korea's death penalty because the government is the criminal institution. So we no. begin to drift towards that area of, you know, I support the death penalty. I wouldn't support it under Adolf Hitler. Well, of course, that's very interesting. It's the same kind of argument in the slippery slope, which can take us back to what you were saying earlier that I wanted to comment on. In terms of self-determination, it's been a problem since the very founding of the republic. How far do you take it? So if we establish, and I fully believe and I think history establishes it beyond any doubt, American constitutional history, that the Constitution was a compact among the states, where the states are understood not in the states as governments, as legislatures, but as the people residing in them, that each state compacted to be part of the Union, acceded to the Union, and therefore each state may secede from the Union. That's right. They, the states, may they're the mommy and the daddy. They made it. That's correct. Now, the question comes, how far do you take that? May, may a county secede from a state? May a town secede from a county? May a village secede from a town? May a neighborhood secede from a village? May a block secede from a neighborhood? May an individual secede from all of it? It's the challenge of the slippery slope. Is there something sacred, constitutionally sacred, about the people of each individual state in their highest sovereign capacity that does not get replicated as you get to more and more particular levels. Because if not, then of course we're left with the with a notion of the social contract in which each individual is allowed to contract in or contract out anytime that he or she sees sure. fit, in which case we lose, lose the distinction between a law-abiding citizen and a criminal. Well, bottom line, looking at this, from, from my research, the Crimean annexation is pretty clean and legitimate. 97% plus uh, voted to do it. I mean, I just, it looks asinine from my view to have the so called U.S. government, AKA Obama administration, that helped start this whole thing with the State Department there, act like Russia is involved in some Hitlerian expansion. That's that's true. However, it's something should be said in terms of American constitutional values. There were there were two respects in which that referendum fell critically short by our values, and and we should acknowledge it. Number one is that they it was not the product of a free and full deliberation. Now Putin was smart enough 
not to make it a legislative act on the part of Crimea. Because one thing American constitutional values stand for clearly is that secession cannot be a legislative act. Because if the legislature secedes or accedes to- But it union, was a snap vote. That's part of it, that's right. It was not done after full and fair deliberation. A, and B, it was done where dissent was silenced, and it was done where the military, Russian military was occupying it. So it fails in those two respects. Now, if we look back at our own constitutional ratification process, we also were far from perfect. If a full free vote were taken, for example, of the people of Mass